Although a convict tang is technically a surgeon fish, they don't have a developed tail blade. What's going on, adventure buddies? My name is Brandon Ringstad. Welcome to Nature Meets Paper, the place where we go on an adventure to discover the world of marine biology. I love sharing my experiences with aquatic animals with you through science, stories, and art. It's my goal to raise awareness of our beautiful bodies of water and the creatures that live in them. I want this to be a safe place for anyone to broaden their horizons and go on an adventure. Today I will be using a reference photo that I took, also a canvas that is 8x10, and some Liquitex Basics acrylic paints to, to aid in my storytelling. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Acanthurus triastegus are known as convict tangs. Convict surgeon fish, and in Hawaiian as manini, meaning no big thing. They get their names from the black bands running along their body, making them look like jail uniforms and bars of a jail. So, where can we find the convict tang? Out on the streets of Gotham, prowling a house to rob? No, these are fish. They are found in the wild and in aquariums. Specifically, the tropical marine waters of the Indo-Pacific, Hawaii, California, and south to the Galapagos Islands. They are a reef-associated fish, meaning they like coral reefs, rocky shores, and coastlines up to 90 meters deep at the reef drop-off. That is where we can find the convict tang. Great. We know where to find them. What are we looking for? Convict tangs are a small tropical fish. They have a classic tang or surgeon fish body. They are laterally compressed or thin on both sides with a round oval body. This makes them maneuverable in the reef. They can turn on a dime if they need to get away from predators or a police fish. They grow to be roughly 4 inches long, but can grow up to 7.8 inches at their maximum. Their faces are curved down, making kind of a sh scoop shape. This keeps their face away from whatever they are eating. They have small mouths with little rasping teeth. Their eyes are high on their head and are relatively small. They are also camouflaged with a black bar to hide the eye. Convict tangs are primarily flat white or cream colored with bright or light yellow on the dorsal surface and dorsal fins. Dorsal, for those who don't know, is the back. The reason why they are called convict tangs is because of their many vertical black stripes or bands along their sides. These stripes are like old-time prison suits with black and white stripes, or the bars found in a jail. Since they are a surgeon fish, they have a set of blades or spines on the sides of each of their caudal fin or tail fin. But the convict tang has the least pronounced set of blades out of all of the surgeon fish. With a name like convict tang, you would think they would have better shivs in prison but they're ill-prepared. Okay, we know what to look for when seeking convict tangs. Let's discover some fun behaviors. Convict tangs are active during the day and form small or large schools. They prefer being closer to the reef or sediment. In groups, their camouflage works better. It is disorienting to predators where one fish starts and the other fish ends. It is similar to the tactic of a African zebra. During the night, they hunker close to the reef and change their color a bit to darken themselves. Then they sleep relatively motionless. For those who don't know, fish do sleep. They turn off parts of their brain at a time to keep alert, but to rest and recover from the day. When they are young or juveniles, they spend a lot of time in tide pools. 
they don't have their stripes and are clear. This makes it easier for them to stay safe from strong currents and predators. With a name like the convict tang, you would expect the fish to be a hostile and mean, but they are some of the gentlest fish on the reef and are in aquariums. They keep the ecosystem clean. What do convict tangs eat, and how are they doing? Convict tangs use their scoop faces and rasping teeth to pick and scrape pieces of algae. They are vegetarians. In areas of high algae growth, they keep the reef and rocks clean. They are gentle when they eat. They try not to hurt the coral, since it is alive. Mistakes happen, of course, but they are there to keep everything balanced. It is common to see them congregated near a freshwater runoff area. This mix of water and intense sunlight leads to easy algae blooms. The convict tangs are there to make sure that this can't happen. If these animals are guilty of anything, it is endless cleaning. So how are they doing? The IUCN Red List has them listed as least concern. The study was conducted in 2010 with a stable population. This is on the longer side of a study. It could be updated soon. If any of you out there want to study the convict tang and update the database, that would be fun to work on. I mentioned that the convict tang is used in the aquarium trade. They are also used sometimes in small fishing. There aren't too many th severe threats to this fish. They are beautiful fish and easy to take care of in the aquarium. They will even keep the tanks cleaner. When fishing for these fish, there isn't a big fishing industry. They don't have a ton of meat on their bones. So they aren't taken very often. Other than environmental threats to their homes, the convict tangs are looking good. This brings us to our segment of the adventure where we discover where I saw and photographed this fish. Now I have seen tons of convict tangs in the wild in Hawaii when snorkeling. They are fun and friendly fish. I just never got a great photo of one until now. I found this fish at the Point to Find Zoo and Aquarium in Tacoma, Washington. It was in their Baja Bay encounter. I saw a school of convict tangs swimming in circles close to the glass. They were zooming around the tank, going from the back of the, to the front and back again. I was able to snap a photo of this fish while it was swimming near a rock. I know, riveting. <laughs> the way it flashed brightly when it hit the rays of light, how it could turn and disappear, its glorious banded patterns. It all tickled the senses. Most people would only pay a little attention to these fish, especially if there are sea turtles or large animals in the tank, or in the wild. Of course everyone is going to look at the big showy animals, or charismatic megafauna. I want to look at everything, the small, the large, the showy, the pretty, the ugly. I love it all. I must keep a mental record of the fish I have been able to see to know if I have used it or not. Sometimes I forget and snap a photo anyways. Then I must remember what the fish was doing and what my experience was up to about a year afterwards. It is fun for me to see fish and sea creatures and share them with you. I want to raise awareness of the creatures and ecosystems out there. It might inspire somebody to study or work with an animal and better our understanding of the world. For this painting, I wanted the background to look like bright streaks of colored rocks and coral mixed with some anemones or bubbles in the top right. I wanted the convict tang to be the central focus, like it was swimming through an environment at high speeds. It could be a police chase or something, something fun. 
but I really wanted to capture this fish and shine a spotlight on it to share. There we have it, this painting is finished, and I hope you had fun along the way. Please stick around to hear about this month's charity opportunity. This month I am choosing to support ALS Association. I specifically donated to the Evergreen, the Washington Evergreen lo location. Now for those who aren't familiar, ALS is an awful disease. It's a progressive neurodegenerative disease, which means the function of your body slowly deteriorates or sometimes quickly deteriorates over time until total function is lost. Now, I have seen the effects of this. I have had friends, close friends who have had this uh, awful, terrible disease. I want to be able to help the cause and for research or for awareness or for treatments and different things just so that these people who are affected and these families who are affected can have some peace of mind or some help. That is why I am helping the ALS Association. D did you like this painting? Cool. Did you know that you can purchase each piece of art that I make? I sell my originals and I also make museum quality Giclée prints. Now my originals run $12 a linear inch and my prints run six and three dollars a linear inch. For my prints, I'm gonna be able to make most standard sizes. If you would like one, contact me. Now, you're probably wondering how do I calculate the per total price. Now, that's gonna be or like a rough estimate. You're gonna take the height, add it to the width, and then you're gonna multiply by six, twelve, or three. Now, my there's a difference between my six and three dollars prints my six dollars prints I'm gonna to touch up again to make them as close as possible to the original my originals have uh, glitter glass bead gel medium or pearlescence on them so my six dollar print or my six dollar per linear inch print will have this as well and my three dollars a linear inch print will not I am also selling vinyl stickers and posters stickers run five dollars each and posters are fifteen make sure to tag me in your posts of where you put your stickers. Use hashtag nature meets paper. Thank you so much for watching. You can subscribe if you'd like or ring the notification bell if that's what you want to do. Now ringing that notification bell will alert you to when I post new content and I do my best to post new content every other weekend. Thanks again. Spread love, curiosity, and creativity. I've been Brandon and I'll see you in our next adventure.